One thing that I have noticed in recent weeks and months is that international breaks are starting to cause a really, really big issue, and they're potentially killing football dreams from club football to international football, and it's not good. Now, this is a quite complicated conversation to have, and a lot of people might disagree with a lot of the points, so just comment below what you think, but make sure you watch the entire video through first just to make sure that you've fully understood what I'm talking about here, because... I don't know if I fully understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, first off, I need to start with a bit of a caveat. Of course, it is a massive honour for any footballer to play for their country, without a doubt. From my PE teacher that played for Gibraltar for some reason, to Pele, Neymar, the best players in the world. I should have gone with Messi there, to be honest. But it is always a massive honour to play for your country and do what you can and push that team forwards, and I completely understand it from a player point of view. This is mostly coming from the perspective of fans, from clubs, not the countries themselves, so yeah. Now, the first thing to properly define is what are international breaks? Now, most people, when they think international breaks, are when club football just stops, straight up. Every single country in the world plays some fo football for a couple of weeks, and all is well and good in the world. However, that isn't necessarily everything. I'm also including things like the African Cup of Nations, where African players go to their like home countries and play for their countries in the equivalent of the Euros. The same applies for the Asia Cup. They're all very important, and they count as international breaks, even though they aren't breaks for club football's sake. Those are arguably even more important, but we'll get to them later. And I think there's a lot of massive dangers to international football. Now, this is not going to apply for every single footballer, it's not going to apply all the time, but they're all things that you need to be aware of if you're supporting a club that have a lot of international players. The first thing is injuries. These are quite plain and simple. If a player gets injured on international duty, you're not going to be happy. For example, against San Marino, Rasmus Hoyland was specifically targeted in the back and in his knee by San Marini's players because they wanted to try and get a little bit of an advantage and that's sort of understandable it's just playing hard rough football but when you're specifically targeting a player's injuries it's a little bit nasty and I understand the intent behind it but for Man United fans that's never a good thing because you're potentially going to lose a player because a country that was never going to win the match just wants to get a little bit more of an edge it's a big risk of international football and the same can be seen with the whole Neymar issue at the moment where he's gotten a quite serious injury and won't be able to play for his club for a while. Admittedly, I don't care for his club in the slightest, and I don't care for the fact that he went to Saudi Arabia chasing the bag, but the problem applies all the same across all football clubs. Furthermore, e even without plain injuries, general wear and tear is a big issue. Clubs in the Championship, I'm going to use Leeds United for an example here, play 46 football matches a season. Let's throw in a couple of League Cup matches, a couple of FA Cup matches at the same time. Got hair in my eye. Hold on. There we go. Um, throw in those at the same time, you've got 50 matches. Add pre-season to that, 54, 55. Add international breaks, you're up to 60, and that's without any international competitions. That's a huge amount of football. And for the case of Archie Gray, for example, who's played something mad like seven... Ma is it seven matches in 15 days or three matches in seven days? Something insane like that. And he's 17 years old. If you're a young player that has to play for your country's youth outfit to properly like stake your claim to a position and get some loyalty within that football association, because loyalty plays a big part. We've seen that with Maguire, Phillips, unfortunately. Um... Yeah, you sort of you need to show up whenever you're called upon, and that means that players aren't going to turn down international call-ups, which means they're just going to get more and more injured over time. I think Trent Alexander-Arnold is sort of getting away with it by being injured every time an England call-up happens, except for the big tournaments, which is a little bit of a joke, and I can see why there's an argument that he shouldn't go to those tournaments if he's not playing the other matches. But we need to be aware of that wear and tear. It's going to cause injuries in the long term rather than just in the right now. It's adding 10 matches a season to a schedule that is already packed and is just going to cause a lot more harm. Furthermore, you've got morale impacts. So when you lose a final, so I think we saw it a little bit in the England squad, when you lose a big international final to a rival such as Italy, you're going to drop off in form. I think Trent Alexander-Arnold is another good example where he played incredibly well beforehand and then England lost the Euros final and he seemed a little bit down afterwards and he couldn't get his performances back. The same applies. It's like if you keep losing at club football, you're not going to have good form. 
if you lose in the international game, you're not immediately going to be better for your club because it's a different environment. Admittedly, the different environment plays a sort of part, but if your morale is on the floor, it's not going to get picked up purely based on the fact that you are not playing for your country anymore. And worsening form is a quite serious issue. I think we saw that with Andre Onana, where he played a little bit iffy for Cameroon. Not even that. He's been playing iffy for Manchester United, and then he's now considering not even going back to Cameroon duty purely because he doesn't want to sort of worsen those issues and he wants to stay in that club environment. And a change of position and a change of where you are is not going to be good for getting that consistency that you need to properly perform at your best. It's a big concern for clubs, and it's not even the biggest because the AFCON issue is potentially the largest problem that football clubs have to deal with. The African Cup of Nations takes African players away from their clubs for an entire month, and I completely understand why those players go, because it's the biggest tournament that you can play in for your country that's outside of a World Cup. And for a lot of African nations, you're not going to qualify for a World Cup that, many, that often because there aren't that many World Cup spots going to African countries. And the likes of a Masrawi who, play, who plays for Bayern Munich isn't going to say, no, I'm not going to go and play for Morocco purely because they're with Bayern Munich and Bayern want them in, in a little bit better shape. Add to that the fact that it happens at the same time as the January transfer window and it puts clubs in a massive bind. And the example I've got right now is Leicester City. Leicester City have four or five African internationals that are going to go to the African Cup of Nations because, for example, Pat Sendaka wants to play for Gambia. And I think Wilfred Ndidi will want to play for his country as well, and Dianacho will want to play for Nigeria. And it sort of stacks up, and you lose a lot of players that were arguably putting together the best run of championship form ever for a reason that your club doesn't benefit from in the slightest. Maybe they come back having won the African Cup of Nations, but that doesn't matter to you. That's not what you're fighting for. You're fighting for promotion. The African Cup of Nations is a big issue for European clubs and not African clubs because they get the break, but sides across the world that rely on those African players. I think the same applies for the Asia Cup this season, if I remember right, so Tottenham might lose the likes of Young Min Son. But it's a big concern that has to be dealt with fairly immediately for those clubs. They might need to do more recruitment, it'll cost them money, who knows. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I think that is the perfect example of how an international break can kill football dreams. Football dreams are not necessarily, I want to play in a World Cup final. They are, I want to finish in the playoffs this season on automatic promotion. It's all about sort of the dreams of the players aren't the ones that are getting shot down in these case cases, although with injuries they are. And I think international breaks pose a really big issue. Maybe if there was something like a winter break that was enforced across Europe that was just a couple of weeks, so there was only a couple of weeks of AFCON that were missing, and that had also helped with the scheduling thing. But yeah, ultimately, I think there is far too much football at the moment for players to deal with, and international breaks just contribute to the issue. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Like the video and subscribe. It's always hugely appreciated. We just managed to hit YouTube Partner, and you guys pushed us across that limit, and it is massively appreciated. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.